Hi everyone, it's Brian from the Peace of Eden Homestead. Today I'm in the kitchen and I thought I would talk to you guys all about homemade bread. I find it kind of surprising how many people are shocked that I make my own homemade bread. Um, I've made thousands of loaves over the years. I used to own a catering company and a pizza place and it's just second nature to me now to do it. I know that when you first start it seems a little intimidating and you might be a little bit worried about it, but um, I'm going to walk you through step by step in this video of how to do it. I'm going to give you the ingredients and the measurements and, and show you how to put it together and let it rise and bake it. But at the end of this video, I'm also going to um, make a loaf of bread. And what I'll do is I'll set up the camera and I'll hit record every single time I have to interact with that bread until I have the bread done. Um, I think it probably takes about five minutes of my personal time throughout the day to make a loaf of bread from scratch. Um, but of course it takes hours because you have to wait for it to rise. But my actual investment of my time is only probably right around five minutes. We'll see actually um, at the end of this video how long it does take. But in the meantime, I'm going to make it and I'm going to walk you guys through and show you the process and that'll take a lot longer than five minutes. So if you want to just skip forward to the last five minutes of this video and you'll see actually the process of me doing it like on a day to day basis, then you can do that. But if you want the the um, the step by step guide, then go ahead and come with me and I'll show you how to make homemade bread. All right, so let's get started making this bread. First of all, the bowl wants to slide around a lot and it's kind of handy to not have it slide. So I'm gonna put a damp towel underneath it and that will keep it from moving so much. All right, so we have four and a quarter cups of bread flour. I'm using bouncer flour because that is the best bread making flour. And then we have three quarters of a cup of whole wheat flour. One and three quarter teaspoons of salt. Two and a half teaspoons of sugar. And one and a half teaspoons of yeast. Mix that together just so everything's equal in the batch. And then scoop out a little bit of the flour, about a cup or two. Now we're gonna add to that our one and three quarters cup of water and our five teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now we'll mix that up. The amount of water that you use will dictate how much bread you get. But the amount of flour is always variable because on humid days, the flour holds more water from the air, and on dry days, it holds less. And it's a lot easier to add in flour than it is to add water, and that's why I pulled the extra mix out, because if this is too wet, we can add flour in easily. And if it's too dry, it's really hard to work the water in. So we're going to mix this up. See how it's sticking to my hand still? That tells me that there's not enough flour in it. So I'm going to add some more of the reserved flour. And now we start kneading. To knead, you want to grab the side away from you, pull it forward, and fold it, and then push it down. I usually use my fist to push it down. And then I like to flip it turn it 90 degrees and do the same thing pull it forward and push it down flip it turn it 90 degrees like that and just keep it's not 
a precise thing. You don't have to do exactly like I just showed you, but you do want to keep folding it and working more flour in and folding it and working more flour in until you have a nice stiff dough. So I added some of that flour in and it felt like it was dry and too stiff and I kept working it until all that got in there. And it's a lot more relaxed now and it's starting to get sticky again. See how it sticks to my hand? So we're going to add a little bit more of the reserved flour in and work it some more. So now it's getting so stiff and so dry that I can barely get it to fold without using a ton of pressure. And you see how when I'm folding it, it starts to come back apart. It doesn't want to stay together. So it's not sticky in the middle anymore. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover it up and let it rest for about 15 minutes or so. And I'll come back to you then. All right, so now that that's rested for 15 minutes, let's take a look and see what we've got. It started to hydrate pretty well. And now when I'm folding it, it's sticking together a lot better. So we know we're pretty good. It's not sticky. There's still a little flour on it, but it's hydrated and moist. It's got a nice smooth texture to it. So, if you wanted to make a loaf of bread, you could fold it like this and put it in a bread, buttered loaf pan and then let it rise. But we have company tonight and I think I'm going to make dinner rolls, so I'll show you how to do that. Alright, so to make the dinner rolls, we're going to cut this up into even size pieces. We should get about a dozen good sized dinner rolls out of this batch. Now, if you're really particular, you could actually weigh these and make sure they're even, but I usually just eyeball it. And what you can do is once you get rolling them out, you can even them up. I'll show you how that works. Like if I feel these, the one in my uh, right hand is a little smaller than the one in the left hand. So I just grab a little pinch of dough and even them out. So I'll move these out of the way and show you how I form the dinner rolls. Now you want to, when you cut them, you're going to have a little bit tackier side from the cut edge. So you put that down and then you form a cup with your hand. You're going to push away from you and then toward you in a circular motion. And as you do that, because it's sticking to the counter, it'll form a nice round ball and nice and tight. So you have your dinner roll. Now, because I've done this so many times, I do it with both hands. It might take you a while to get to that. Now as I'm rolling it, I can feel that this one is much smaller than this one. So I'm going to pinch off a good sized chunk of dough and tuck that on the bottom and then re-roll them. Let me see if I can set up my camera in a different way and show you this from a different angle. So as you can see, all of the flour 
didn't quite fit in the dough I made. So the flour was a little drier than on a humid day. But it's always better to have a little left over than trying to have to work that darn water into a dry mix. So that's why I did what I did. So now that we have those all rolled out, we're going to put them in a cast iron pan. You could do it in a cookie sheet or a sheet tray or a 9 by 13 pan or whatever you really wanted to bake them in. I just like cast iron because it's a nice finish on the back of the or the bottom of the dinner rolls and on the sides around the edge. So first we'll butter the pan. I warm this up a little bit so the butter will melt and it helps it to distribute more evenly. It's right on the verge of being hot. You don't want it too hot or your dough will start to cook. Just hot enough to help the butter move around. And then we'll start adding the dinner rolls. Now that those are in, you can roll them around and get the butter all the way around on the tops of them as well. Now we'll just put a cover on them and let them rise for a couple of hours. And the longer you let them rise, the bigger they're going to get. And the bigger they get, the softer they'll be. But there's kind of a balance because if you let them get too big, they will actually collapse and fall back down. So we got to kind of keep checking as we're getting close to having them doubled or even tripled in size. So we'll let them go for a while and check in later. So I was busy and out and I waited a little too long and you can probably see in the video here and here and along this edge where they rose up and touched the lid to the that I have over to keep them from drying out. If that happens, you want to pull it up very slowly and very gently so they have a chance to pull away from the lid without actually popping too many of the bubbles. Because if you pop the bubbles, they'll just collapse down. So I let these rise a really long time and it's time to get them in the oven. Um, I, it's been about four hours, three and a half or four hours since I set them here to rise. So um, it doesn't really take that long to do it. I was busy doing other things and it's okay to let them rise that long. If you let them go too long, they'll pop and break back down. And you can see this one's caving in a little bit. I'm not sure if that's where the lid was touching or if that had started to collapse before I got back. But eventually as the yeast makes bubbles, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually they're going to have to pop and the whole thing will collapse down to nothing. But we caught this just in time. So I'm going to get them in the oven and I'll bring them back to you once they're done. The best way I know of to get perfect bread every time is to use a probe thermometer. If you set the internal temperature to be 204 degrees and then take the probe over to the oven about 10 or 15 minutes after you started it and you put the probe into one of the inner toward the center of the bread cluster there the center of a loaf or in the middle of the um, things and then you plug your probe in then you when the, tank, the buzzer goes off then you're ready to go and they're perfectly cooked they've been in there for 15 minutes and the internal temperature of one of the center rolls is now 135 degrees so as it climbs up and gets to 204 we know we'll be done. I just love these probe thermometers. They make cooking so much easier. So let's disconnect that and then come in here and get these beautiful dinner rolls. Pull that probe thermometer out. 
Now I like to take the dinner rolls out of the pan so that condensation doesn't get in underneath them from the bread cooling down because that makes the outside kind of soggy. So I'm going to turn these out onto a platter and I'll be right back. So when I turn these out, I want them to not be in direct contact with anything. So, or at least not anything solid. So I have a couple of sushi, sushi mats here on top of this plate so that the air can get in and around and underneath them. See if I can flip this over. There we go. Ooh, that's hot. Hot, 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 hot. All right, we'll keep them together so they don't dry out around the edges while they cool. But what I usually like to do is taste test one while they're still piping hot from the oven. See how soft and tender this is? Mmm, just delightful. There we go.